All right, moving on with equipment that I have to repair is this, uh, this is an HP uh, 8112A pulse generator. Uh, this unit, uh, I got it at a, um, I got it at a ham fest. It was free. Well, I can say it wasn't free. I got, I got it from the gentleman that sold me this um, signal generator. And uh, he told me at the time that uh, it didn't work. I uh, made him an offer for the signal generator and told him to throw in the pulse generator. Uh, and, and he accepted the offer and gave me the pulse generator uh, with the signal generator. And uh, he told me, like I say, he told me it didn't work. I knew it wasn't working. I didn't know what the issue was. But uh, anyway, so I've, I've gotten around to, uh, uh, it's it's next on the shelf, or it was next on the shelf to to get taken a look at. So I've got it set up here on the bench, and I've got it plugged into the... Um, isolation transformer there and we'll power it on and we'll show you what it does all right so it powers on it goes through its uh segment test and the first thing we get is a error code which is eo1 the manual uh mentions that when you get an error code on power up you need to push a a front panel key because what happens is that when the signal the system flags an error code it stops the uh, boot process of that and that EO1 is the very first um, error so we'll push a key any key on the keypad which is supposed to continue continue the process along and this is what happens we just get uh, everything lights up and uh, we get segment test on all of the LED on the display segments and we push keys here on the keypad and nothing happens so it doesn't do anything it's it's locked up it does that sometimes. Hit certain keys and it'll uh, do this kind of uh, garbage here. But uh, that's all it does. And we'll power back on and we'll get the same error code again. Alright, so let's look at the manual and see what the manual says to do. Alright, I got the manual. Um, it's a. Uh, um, I got this huge. Uh, these, this manual. It has these huge fold-out pages. Uh, we've got an overall block diagram, but uh, this is the general troubleshooting section. And it's got a, a flow chart here, so we're going to power on. Uh, we did not get a key jammed indication. We did get the lamp test, and the first thing it does is a RAM test. And if the RAM test failed, we get an E01, which is what we got, and the sequence stops. So for an E01 error code, uh, what it says is the processor is not able to store and verify a test pattern into RAMs U10 and U11, and this is in order to prevent any influence from the control and main boards or move internal device bus connector. And it says see service block 3, so let's take a look at service block 3. Alright, we're at service block 3, here's the, I, re I referenced this note earlier, this is error code is shown in display, this is where it tells us to uh, press a key to uh, put it back in a routine. Well, we did that and it didn't do anything. All right, so where is... So here are uh, U10 and U11. Those are the RAM. And looking at the schematic, here is our microprocessor. Um, it's going to go through... Uh, these data lines are going to go through uh, this data bus transceiver U2. And... Uh, it's going to go on to this bus, and this is the data bus for, um, it was basically just the, 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 the system data bus. There's a controller over here for the HPIB. Um, you've got all the uh, unit, the ROMs for the programming, and we've got the uh, RAM uh, chips, which is U10 and U11. So these are the RAM chips that uh, the processor is trying to run a test pattern to. So run a test pattern to see if the RAM is working. And what it's saying is it's not getting, um, it's not able, or it's not getting the correct pattern back. I don't know if it's unable to write or if it's not getting the correct pattern back. Either way, it's not uh, seeing what it's expecting to see, so it's stopping. So the first thing that we'll look at is we'll look at these two RAMs. And we'll also look at this uh, data bus transceiver. If this, uh, if this U2 data bus transceiver, uh, which is just a, um, it's a 74LS574, 
uh, chip, so it's just a uh, just a standard um, uh, just a standard uh, uh, digital chip. If that's not working, or if one of these two RAMs is has gone bad, then that uh, could very well be giving us our problem. Uh, what I did was I, I went ahead and took um, this is the U2 uh, data bus transceiver. I went ahead and took it out and put it on and put a socket in. And I'll show you why I did that here in a minute. All right, so we've got the unit powered up. It's still showing the e, uh, E01 error code. And let's see. we need to probe the data pins. Is uh, pins two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we're gonna probe those points, and we'll see what uh, see what we get on this oscilloscope. Um, all right, so this is going to be pin two. I'm going to set my scope up here. Three possible uh, reasons for this. Uh, one being that uh, this bus line uh, transceiver is, has gone bad. And this is the, I, I took this one out and put it on the socket, but this is the original, uh, this is the original chip uh, that was in there. It's, you can see the 82 uh, date code on there which matches the the other chips uh, there's an 83 and uh, there's an 82 there and an 82 so this is the original uh, chip that was in uh, so that's one problem this this uh, TTL chip's gone bad another problem could be that one or both of these RAM chips has failed or a third problem which I'm uh, hopeful is not the case is that uh, because all of these uh, EPROMs are all on the data bus also that if one of these EPROMs has failed, uh, that could be uh, give, causing the uh, the data bus uh, lines, uh, the data bus to be, I guess, compromised in a way such that the signal is degraded. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I have one already, is I'm going to swap out this uh, bus line transceiver chip. I'm going to put a new one in there and see if that uh, fixes our issues. All right, we've got the data bus transceiver out, and I think I said earlier it was a um, 74LS574. That is uh, was incorrect. Um, it is a uh, 74LS245, uh, and I've got uh, I've got some here that I I don't know if these are new or if they're ones that I've uh, removed from some other equipment. Uh, they look. Uh, Well, they don't have any saw ROMs. So they must have been socketed. But anyway, uh, I've got some. Uh, uh, I'm going to put this one in. This is a SN74LS245. And uh, that's got an 85 date code, but that's all right. We'll put that in and see if that uh, fixes, if that changes anything. Uh, I've got the, uh, I've got the power turned off on the unit right now. I don't wanna, you don't want to do this with the power on. Because uh, that could cause the chip to be damaged all right so that is uh plugged in the socket now let's uh power it on and see if anything changes all right so we still got our same error code e01 all right so the next uh course of action that we'll do is i'm going to uh, I've I've got uh, these are um, these these RAM chips. These are uh, NEC brand. Uh, looks like a D four 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 C. I don't remember off the top of my head. The manual uh, specifies what kind of uh, what kind of RAM chip it is, the, the memory, the size, and all. Um, but I've got uh, I've got two of them ordered. I found a pair on eBay that were pretty cheap. Uh, so I've, I've got uh, two of them. They should be arriving sometime, I think today, actually. And what we'll do is we'll take, I'm going to take these out. We'll put sockets in. These are 18-pin uh, packages. We'll, I'm going to put some 18-pin sockets in there, and then we can socket those new RAM chips on. In the meantime, uh, one other thing we can do that would be quick is we'll go ahead and take out these ROM chips, and we'll see if we can boot the unit 
All right, ROM chips are removed. They're sitting over there on the bench. So let's power up and see if anything changes. All right, so it's gone through the display test. And it looks like uh, there's nothing, nothing now. It's not even showing error code. Possibly the microprocessor needs those ROMs to pull some programming out of uh, in order to continue the boot because it didn't boot past. Uh, let's see if uh, I don't know where that uh, flowchart is. It didn't boot past. Um, it didn't even boot to the first uh, to to get the EO one. It didn't do the RAM test. So I'm gonna plug those ROMs back in and see if uh, we get it to at least go to the, uh, the RAM test. All right, the ROM chips are back in. Let's power on the unit and see what happens. All right, powered on and we get the E01 error code again. So it would appear that uh, uh, the ROMs need to be uh, put in the system uh, which which makes sense now that I think about it. Uh, we, we wouldn't need the programming error to tell the microprocessor uh, what to do to run the um, the startup routine. But uh, it could also be a good indication uh, because if one of these ROM chips was corrupted um, and and the data wasn't uh, available, then it, there would there'd be nothing to tell the uh, processor to, to write to the RAM. So that uh, seems to tell me that at least... Uh, there's a good chance that these ROM chips are good. This um, transceiver bus uh, chip is working. And that uh, as it runs through the, the, the program, it would first pull the programming here from the ROM to the microprocessor. The microprocessor would start the self-check routine to write to the RAM. And at that point, it writes to the RAM, and either one or both of the RAM chips are bad. And it uh, can't get a good, uh, it can't get a good uh, data either write or read off of the RAM. So once those RAM chips come, uh, we'll go ahead and put those in. I'll go ahead and take the old ones out and put some sockets in. I'm not going to put that on video because it's just desoldering and soldering is kind of boring. But uh, once I get uh, the new chips, then we'll pick up and see where we go from there. Okay, uh, new chips came today. These are the old these are the old chips that were uh, in the in the pulse generator, and I've got uh, new chips uh, installed on sockets here and here, and we got our uh, our uh, transceiver uh, chip installed there on a socket. So we've got the unit hooked up to power. And let's power it on and see what happens. All right, and there it is. So no error codes. That's good. And uh, controls seem to be responding, so that's good. Uh, okay, yep, so there's the range switches. All right, that does the Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's uh, hook it up to oscilloscope, see if we can put out, what is that, 10 millisecond, a 10 millisecond pulse. All right, so I'm gonna hook this up to the oscilloscope. See if we get any, any, any output on the scope. All right, so I think we need to turn that there. All right, and we're getting some, we're getting some pulses. Oh, it's like Ten milliseconds. What is that? So that's a. Uh, all right, so we're on a two millisecond scale. 
That's two, four, six, eight, ten. So those are ten millisecond pulses. Yeah, I must have a really low uh, duty cycle. I don't know exactly. I haven't I haven't figured out exactly how to uh, how to uh, make adjustments on this yet. But uh, anyway. Looking at the uh, scope, I'm sure somebody's probably screaming at me that I'm doing this the wrong way. But, uh, alright, so that's one millisecond. Um, that looks right. Uh, alright, so, yeah, so we're two milliseconds per division, and that pulse is half of a division, so that'd be one millisecond, which is what we're showing here for the, uh, I guess WID is width. Is one millisecond? Yep, there we go. And that's a uh, two milliseconds. Two milliseconds. And looks like a two volts. I'm not sure how to change the uh, the amplitude. Anyway, we'll have to figure that out. But it uh, looks like it's working now. So that was a uh, pretty quick, uh, pretty quick repair. Quick and easy repair on this uh, pulse generator that uh, I got for free, so you can't beat that. Uh, it cost me $3 for two new RAM chips, so $3 pulse generator. Anyway, well, that wraps it up for this video, and I'm not sure what else I got on the shelf over there. It's looking kind of empty, so uh, we'll see what uh, comes along next. Uh, thanks for watching.